I'm going to be demonstrating the new servo synchronization system that JR Propo has for combining two servos on a flight surface. And it will do up to four. All right, I've taken this opportunity to upgrade my 8911s that were cordless, and I'm putting in 8944 brushless servos. Now, before we do this, the one of the critical things that we have to really look at on your installations as well to be able to use a synchro system is to have free and easy movement with all the linkages as well as the hinge lines. Okay, what happens is this servo and the other servo they talk to each other via kind of like a resistance where they give feedback this is this this one will be the master this one will be the slave so this one is determining its throw and movement for the resolution dependent on what this servo does this is your, this would be the inboard servo this is the main servo on the wing okay so it's real critical that the, everything is moving free and clear so that the two aren't getting false readings from resistance from one to the other via, you know, a, a bound surface or tight linkages. So that's real, real critical so whenever you get, get to that point when you start synchronizing the servos. Okay, so I'm starting to go ahead and put these servos in, the 8944s, and it brought, uh, brought a little tip that I've used for years and years and years to mind. It's, uh, it's an easy way to uh, attach clips instead of keepers and you know aftermarket stuff this is bow and arrow like bow string for the bow itself it's got a wax content to it and it, it the nice thing about it is whenever you tie the first knot in it you know it seems like you always got to have somebody hold it there or take another finger to hold it in place till you get the second knot on it well this stuff with the wax on it is perfect because you don't have to do that you just tie one note uh, one knot in it pull it tight and it stays there and you put, tie the second knot it's ready to go just a little tip, uh, as I was putting it together, I thought it might be uh, informative for you. Okay, so we're starting the synchronization process. I might want to mention that this particular programmer has the sync program set into it. The newer versions have it. If you have an old synchronizer, then you can either send it into the DFA or to the service center and can get it upgraded. Okay, so... Before we start, you have to, <clears throat> I've got one wing panel <clears throat> sitting in front of me, and you have to determine one servo, this is a two aileron servo setup, one of them has to be the master and one of them has to be the slave. I've opted for the inboard servo on the aileron to be the master and the outboard is the slave. So the first thing we need to do is plug in the programmer to the inboard servo because that's the master that's the one that uh, you're going to be doing all the that's going to be the key as far as uh, as the inputs and changes and everything else that's going to be your your master servo and I might say at the end of this both servos are going to be acting as one so whatever changes that you'll need to do on like sub trims ATVs that type of thing you only have to do it to the to the master servo and the slave will automatically follow it. So in theory, instead of having two leads coming out of the transmitter, you can, or I'm sorry, out of the receiver, the, to the two aileron servos, you can put a Y harness in there and just run one lead from the receiver to the two aileron servos, and they will still act as one servo. Okay, so now I have the master servo plugged into the controller. Okay, so <clears throat> to reset the outboard or slave servo to this whole program, I got to change the ID to 50 1. Currently, it is defaulted as, as ID number 1 1. Okay, so to do that, you come down here, you change this to servo ID, you go over here and scroll up to channel 50 to, to the ID number 50 and come back and just to verify it okay so that's good there so we turn it off and just to make sure i'm going to back this up 
It ain't key to start, and now what it's doing is scanning through it all until it detects its that particular servo ID. Now I might say, as we're doing this, um, when this is done, both servos will be acting as one servo. So all the inputs, all your ATBs, all your sub trims, everything that you do in the transmitter, you only need to do to the master servo. The other one will trace it. Okay, so it says it's ID50, everything's good there. All right, so we're gonna turn this off and we plug the other servo into the, into the plug. This is a multi-port plug. You can do up to four different servos at the same time. Okay, so we turn it back on and we go down, scroll down one and go all the way to the other end to synchro mode. Okay, now it says you hit the right switch to start. Okay, so we hit the right switch and now it's telling us to go to max angle high, which in this particular case, I'm gonna just push the servos to wherever you feel comfortable. You don't wanna obviously, you know, overload these servos to the point where they're jammed. So, and this is not critical, so, I mean, it is, but it's not critical to what we're doing right now. So once that's set, we come back down here and we say, okay. Now it's telling us to go low. So we go full deflection on the other way until we feel comfortable with it, where there's no binding, nothing's really locked up too much. And we come down here and we go max angle low and we say, that's okay and then copy all the parameters. So now it's starting the process on its own. It's gonna come back, it's gonna zero out, and it'll start the whole deflection and get everything all squared away. And as you can see right there, it's starting, it's starting the process. Now this takes, oh, roughly anywhere from 15 to 18 minutes, something like that to do the whole synchro system going up and down and it traces everything so once that's done again like i said you will just take all your inputs and changes your sub trims your dual rates everything will go right to the master servo which in this particular wing is the inboard servos on both wing wings so once that's done then all you do is go in and make your adjustments and the slave servo, which are the outboard servo, will follow and do exactly what the inboard servo says in perfect synchronization. Now, all the way through the resolution, all the way through the endpoints, everything is will be just acting as one big servo. And there it goes back. It's completed the first side. And it's getting ready to go on to the second. Okay, so now that the servo synchronization is done on the aileron servos, okay, we have the, the slave is out on the outboard, the master is on the inboard, okay. They are working as one servo now, so you only have to have a single lead coming into the, serv into the fuselage of the airplane for that particular wing. The same on the other side, if you bring one lead coming in, or you did a Y harness to a receiver, okay, both servos would operate as one servo. So whatever you do to do to both of them, like for instance, if you wanted to change the sub trim, you would assign it or change it to the master and the slave servo would, would automatically trace it. Okay, so now since I have redone this airplane, okay, Part of it is in PWM, as you can see some of the functions here on the 16 BPX, okay. Part of it is in PWM and the aileron servos are now using XBUS, okay. These, these ports along the top here are for XBUS, the ones on the side are for PWM. They are all hot and they all operate at the same time, which is the beauty of this particular unit. Okay, so to be able to use XBUS, you have to go in, now that the servos are synced, you still have to assign them a 
function via XBus. So to do that, you go into each servo and assign it. Say for instance, this is the uh, left aileron number, left aileron master, which would be the inboard, okay? So I have assigned that as channel number two. And then I took the other servo and assigned it the ID channel number two as well, and just plugged them both into the into the ports in the X bus in the power distribution board. Okay, so wherever these things are plugged in into this board, they'll still operate as the left channel or left aileron. Okay, so you duplicate that. You do the same thing on the right side. And on those, I think I assigned those to channel channel number eight, I think if I recall. Uh, you use your airplane configuration and the transmitter to figure out what channels and what servo IDs you want to give those particular servos. So once that's done, you assign those two servos to the same function. Okay, you don't want to do do two different functions because they're they're again like I said they're operating as one. So you assign the ID the same on both of those. You plug them into the X bus, and everything works. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I've got these set. I put brand new 8944s in the aileron servos on these things, and to give you an idea of the speed and the resolution on them. I'm slowly moving, moving the stick. I've got Expo in this particular flight mode. I didn't have to change anything on the airplane. So it's very, very smooth throughout the transition. Both servos are working together. Okay, and as far as the speed, as you can see, it's, it's very, very fast. So uh, can't wait to get this thing in the air try these new servos and see how everything works. Okay, so here's another tip. This would be more specific for the pattern and the iMac guys that are really uh, precision aerobatic oriented. If you wanted to, you could actually take on the elevators and make an apparatus that would attach to the elevators on both sides and bring them out this particular rudder will come off so it might be easier so it's not so far so you, but if if your rudder doesn't come off you come out and you make an apparatus to come to come out and behind into the other surface to the other surface to be able to lock those two elevators together and then you do that servo synchronization system on the two elevators that way they'll track up and down perfectly with each other and again, it only goes back if you make any trim changes or uh, throw changes, that type of thing. You only have to do it to the one channel. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video and hope it was informative. If you got any questions or concerns regarding the sync system, feel free to get hold of anybody at dforce.net or the JR Propo Service Center. Anybody at those two locations would be happy to give you a hand. Again, thanks for watching.